Hello, everybody. Um, my name is David Campman, and I'm from Southeast Technical Institute. Uh, that's in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Um, I'm going to be going through uh, how we kind of set up our training schedule platform uh, because we do a lot of faculty training here, a lot of in-house uh, training and making more use of it and how we ended up using WordPress and then where it's kind of gone from there. So um, I will jump over to the, there we go, perfect. So hopefully everyone can hear me and can see the screen okay. I looks good on my end, so hopefully it looks good on your end as well. Um, but I'm gonna get going here. So first, a little bit about me. Uh, my title at Southeast Tech is the Instructional Facilitator. Um, what that title means is always kind of funny because I don't technically 100% know, although I kind of gathered what it is about. Uh, basically, what I do with our faculty is uh, faculty support and development. So we're running lean at our school, probably like most of your schools do. There's not you know dozens of us flying all over the place. And so I get to work with a lot of faculty across our campus, which is a lot of fun. I've gotten to learn a lot about various programs and work with teachers doing a lot of different things with their classrooms. Um, that's also given me a lot of other responsibilities. Um, if we have video work that needs to be done, that's me. If we need a website built, I will try to put one together if I can. Um, you know, anything kind of under the sun that really doesn't have someone on campus that can do that, then I'll uh, take on that responsibility. And that's kind of how the WordPress tool kind of fell into my lap. Um, uh, we had needed some different tools of uh, sharing resources, and this is about seven, seven years ago. And so a WordPress site seemed to be the simplest solution to getting this in here um, of what I needed uh, to use with our faculty uh, because our LMS, our CMS, all that other stuff wasn't really up to that level at that time. Um, now I'm in South, uh, South Dakota, so I'm not sure where everyone is around from. Um, you can put that in the chat. I'm always curious to hear where people are from uh, when I'm doing these things. And if you're from the region, you know, there's not a lot of people in our area, but we do have a lot going on and our students expect a lot from us and our faculty. Um, I'm also at a technical institute. So our focus is applied learning in demanding careers. So continuous improvement is part of the game. We bring in new technology, new um, pedagogies all the time. Okay. Oh, cool. I saw a couple, uh, Seattle and uh, Sacramento. Those are both towns I have never been to, but I am actually planning on going there within the next year. So that's awesome. Okay, so our situation back before we started uh, using WordPress for scheduling, uh, we would have training that would operate in the summer for faculty. During the school year, we would have a few sessions here and there, little things, more one-on-one -on -one training. We didn't do any massive organized workshops because our faculty were too busy teaching. That makes sense. So we would spend our time prepping for summer to do massive uh, changes, get faculty new training, those types of things. Uh, so it's a fairly big deal. Uh, when we first started, we would have a Google form that faculty would sign up with, and that's how they would schedule themselves for what they were doing during the summer. Okay, so I, you can probably already see where that's headed. That's probably not a good solution. And we knew that communication is going to be minimal over the summer. Many of our faculty go and work in full-time positions in their industries over the summer. So they are busy uh, eight to five during the day at their other jobs. Some of them will head far, far away from campus. They are travelers and they will not be near uh, computers anytime soon. So communication is not always the best option. Uh, so whenever we do our communication, we try and get it done before summer hits. Um, what we would run into though, we have uh, forgetful faculty, okay? They did the sign up and confirmation, 
from Google of what they signed up for. So within days, within weeks, they will forget which workshop they signed up for. They will hand them a calendar. And if, unless they physically mark which ones they're going to, they're not sure if they're going to the one that's in May or the one that's in June. And that's important for us because we're planning to have so many people at a certain workshop. And many times we can only hold so many. Uh, emailing is very ineffective when dealing with these sessions. Over the summer, we'd send reminder emails to faculty, um, almost always get no response. Um, we don't know if they got it and just went, yep, that's great. Or if they didn't receive it because they weren't near their phone or their computer. Um, and manually tracking was kind of a headache. Uh, we would have our initial list and then uh, all the different people on the team were getting contacted by the people that had signed up saying they were not coming or others would then say they do want to come later. And then we had to make sure we were updating the, the central list to make sure it's all up to date. Basically, it was kind of a little bit of a headache there, especially when we were on vacations over the summer too. So I might get an email from someone saying, I can't come no more, but I might be out for a week. Then I, I have to make sure I'm trying to get that communicated to other people. And it's not very good for, for that type of a, of a process. So we knew we needed something different. And this is kind of what I had created like a wish list, so to speak, of things I wanted to have done. Um, I knew I wanted something to make it easy to have uh, event creation, especially making duplicate events. Because we would run one workshop three, four times during the summer. So I don't want to have to do a whole lot of manual work making duplicate sessions. Just simple. Um, event reminders. You know, we do want an email reminder to go out to them, a confirmation of something. So they have some record that they know they're signed up. That's always important. Um, and then also an iCal event. Now, this is a personal thing I had. I honestly had no idea if there was a way I could do this for free or almost no cost. Um, but I know when I would sign up for uh, online conferences, I would get an email and I'd have an event in there and it says, add it to your calendar. And I wanted that for this. I, I felt this was very important to making it effective. Uh, we obviously wanted a registration history, knowing who has registered and who is uh, no longer in there. Uh, cancellation lists for us and for the, the faculty. So they know. And then we want to be able to track all that progress as it happens throughout the whole time leading up to when they're actually there. Now, the last one on the list, this one was probably one of the most recommended things from faculty when we were creating our list. No new passwords. They knew we might be using a separate app or something else altogether. And they go, no passwords, though. We, we don't want any new accounts we have to remember, none of, nothing like that. So that puts me in an interesting situation, obviously. <clears throat> Sorry. So I started going through the process of searching. And first thing I did was I looked at our current tech on campus because if we have a solution on campus, I would much rather use that because obviously it's easier, quicker, and cheaper if we already have it. That by far would be my choice. Um, we did not have anything that would work at all for this solution. Uh, the most we had, and this is probably what you guys have, you guys have options where students are registering for courses and you probably think of it going, hmm, that might work. It, it won't, just write it off right away. Um, I reviewed vendors, went through um, all the different conferences, found big vendors, small vendors that had something to do with calendars, scheduling, something like that and went through that list and that was interesting. And then I did a Google search for event scheduling apps. And wow, uh, there's a lot out there in case you didn't notice. Um, uh, event scheduling apps and event apps in general are a booming industry apparently right now. And it is ridiculous. Um, all of them cost a lot of money by the way. So no. 
Um, then I switched over to searching for faculty uh, development sites at schools. So I would search, you know, University of Nebraska faculty development or professional development or something like that to, to try and find uh, what they're doing and what they're using. And I got some good leads off of that, as well as looking on Twitter in the higher ed community, seeing what was available that people had already used. And what I found is that a lot of people were using WordPress for scheduling. And I was kind of surprised by that. Um, but when I really got into the options that were available, I was really pleased. There was a couple of them out there that were really good uh, event options. And that really kind of uh, steered me right in that direction. So I then decided, all right, we're going to go into WordPress with, and I, I went with Events Manager Pro. Uh, that was the one that we went with. Um, it has two options. It has the standard Events Manager plugin that you have to have. You have to install that first anyway. Um, then I upgraded to Pro, and it was something like $70 for a year, something like that, uh, which is very cheap. And the biggest thing with that, you get a couple features. The biggest thing you get is the support. You get access to the, the pro forums where you can search what people are doing. You can post uh, questions there and get responses fairly quick. Um, so, I mean, you that was why we did that pro feature uh, was for that alone. Uh, because we knew we were going into a little uncharted territory for ourselves. So we wanted to make sure we had some support going on. Um, then in addition to that events manager pro, uh, the login was another thing because we're using WordPress and I don't want to have our faculty have to make another login. We use active directory on campus and, um, I found this tool and it, as of recently, it's only been updated a year ago. So I'm, I'm getting a little scared just a little bit that it might no longer work for me down the road, but right now it's been very awesome as our faculty have a password change in the regular system, it works seamless. They just log in like they would to any of our other systems on campus and they're in. And I love that part of it. It is so wonderful that I don't have to worry about accounts. They don't have to worry about it. It all just connects. Um, IT just had to put a couple lines of information into the plugin and it worked. It took maybe like 10 minutes to get it all done. Uh, then I, I did put in a couple other count, uh, plugins that I felt were fairly useful. Um, the WordPress full calendar, because it's a, uh, I like the look of this calendar better than the other ones out there. Um, I wanted it nice and simple and clean and able to view things on it very easy. So that's the one I chose. And then force login, which is another one. Um, I wanted to kind of put it all behind a firewall, essentially. So you had to log in to see what was going on. Not like I really cared, not like anyone's really going to go digging for our subdomain. But regardless, I just wanted to do that, make it a little more clean for people. Um, then you make sure that they're signed in and you don't have any login issues uh, when they're trying to register because they had to log in first before they even got to that point. Um, so force login is the one I used for that. Um, then this is what it would look like. There's a couple pieces in here with the emails. I wanted the email confirmation. So when you sign up for a workshop, a session or whatever you want to call it, um, you get this email saying your name is confirmed for, and that's just a bunch of gibberish I put in there for the uh, practice one um, on this uh, date at this time. And um, if there's a location involved, it would also uh, put that there as well. Um, so very helpful. And it says, you know, you like I all the rest of that's just custom stuff I put in there. So down here on the bottom right, you have the uh, this is in the settings where I put this in there. And what they're using is placeholders. That's how uh, the event manager pro is built around. It's super easy, but just this is where you go to get the full list of all the available placeholders. That when I found those two options, uh, event related placeholders, location ones, that made my life a lot easier. Because in that confirmation email, the first arrow, the hashtag underscore event iCal link, 
That's the thing that will give them a download for an iCal event that they can then load onto their calendar. So they'll get reminders that they have an event coming up, a workshop coming up that they need to attend. I love that feature. Uh, it even works on smartphones. So if they get the email on their smartphone, they click it, it'll load into their uh, calendar app on their smartphone. So very, very helpful. Okay. Um, the bottom part in there, I did put my name because we're not like ginormous. They know it's coming from me. My email is the email account that it is coming from. So it just made sense to put my name on it. If you wanted to, you could create a, a different email account that this standard email is coming from, uh, from your institution. You can do that. Um, but I, I just chose my email. So I put my name in there um, because when I first did it, the default was uh, from events manager. And so I got a lot of uh, laughter from our faculty when they started calling me events manager uh, on campus. Um, that was fun. So that's why I changed it. I recommend making it a little personable. Um, I've thought about changing it again a little bit to fit some different needs in there um, just to kind of keep it changing over time, but nothing specific. Now, when they have their event, there's a My Bookings page that they'll get. And on it, there's a simple one button click to cancel their registration. They cancel it, say yes, they're canceling, and they're out. Then someone else can get in. This we found was very important because someone would, would cancel, and we had some workshops where we would only have room for eight or ten people, and we needed to make sure if there was a seat available, it was available right away so someone else could get in. So as faculty realized this was happening, they would be watching to see if their uh, event was available again at a later date. Um, we did do some custom settings. I reduced all the options available. I, if it wasn't necessary that it was an option for people to do, I took it off. So um, that would be stuff like it, letting them create their own events. Okay, They don't need to create their own events. That's not necessary. So turn that off. Uh, there was filtering where they could filter for different types of events. That wasn't necessary, so we turned it off. <clears throat> turned off all the other extras that were on there, kept it nice and clean. Uh, that was our focus. Um, no event submissions, definitely turn that off. So if it, if it was not something I felt was needed, I did turn it off. One thing I did do, though, is after we went through a year of this, I went through the extras that were there, and I asked people, would you like this? Would you like this? Because if they would like it, I can turn it back on. Uh, it's kind of one of those things. They don't know what's possible because they don't know it's available. So I made them know that it was available. And if they wanted it, I could uh, add it back as an option for them to use. Um, most of them said no to pretty much all that extra stuff. They wanted something simple as well. Uh, on the right, I did add a custom code to this page. This is the main page. So when you click in and you get signed in, this is the first page you go to. So it will list the upcoming one. So there's a custom uh, text there. So event link for the future. So I would not have all of them that were available. I would not have all of them in the past. Um, if it was, if it's already been done, it's not listed as a list of available workshops. Makes sense, right? Um, then uh, I had the event, the events listed for them uh, as part of that. And then the calendar at the bottom, that's that full calendar. That's that uh, WP full calendar that I mentioned earlier. It's um, nice and easy to sort to find what you need. So after we did this a couple, uh, couple of years, this is the process we went through. We would have all of our summer workshops ready to go and posted by April. We would in April have a monthly meeting with our faculty or communication sent out that would let them know um, 
this uh, the workshops are available. And just a quick reminder to all faculty, how do you sign up for them? Because they only did it once a year. So I was not expecting them to remember everything about the process. Um, we also did have an option uh, where if there was less than six people registered, unless it was a unique setting, obviously, uh, where we only wanted six or something, uh, but for a standard room of uh, 30 or 20 something to 30, if we only got six people registered and it was end of spring semester, we would cancel that workshop. So it was an incentive for those that wanted to go to that workshop time to get their friends, get their other faculty to come to it to make sure they got that six. Um, mainly because we were offering multiple opportunities for workshops. And so we didn't want to stretch ourselves too thin if we didn't uh, have a lot of people interested. Biggest wins for us. Logging in by far. Everybody was super happy about that. It was wonderful. It worked well. And it's amazing how the little things like that just make people's um, experience with the tech work so much better. Um, an iCal event reminder, that one everyone liked as much as I did. I thought that was great. And it really did help people uh, remember coming to their sessions. Our numbers for our expectations and our numbers for actually those that did attend were very, very accurate, uh, much closer than previous years. And on top of that, when people weren't going to actually come, they would then contact us um, the day before. Um, again, something came up, I can't come because they would get that email and then that I, the calendar event would pop up reminding them and they would contact us. They would reach out, which was kind of nice. So we weren't sitting there waiting for people. Um, then it was an easy process for their credentialing. Our faculty had to do credentialing with uh, sessions they attended and they would have a list uh, under their bookings history of all the different things they went to that they could then share with credentialing and it was there in their history. They just have to log into the site again and they can pull up what they've done in the past um, so they never lose that information. We did have some hiccups though because nothing is perfect. Um, we were we have some workshops where we wanted to have multiple stage ones. So you, you go to this one, then you go to this one, then you go to this one. Um, this tool, not the most effective for that. It was kind of cumbersome. Uh, what we ended up doing is uh, creating an event. And then when someone registers for the one, we would auto register them for the other two um, if they didn't do that themselves, uh, because we didn't want people registering for the second and third if they couldn't for the first. So th there was some manual work involved with that one, but it, it, it was okay. Um, we would prefer uh, it to be added. And I know it's because uh, in that pro forums, you can see others want it too. The ability for a, a multi-stage type of event where it's on multiple separate days. Um, matching the school website. That was our goal to try and make it look as much like the regular website as possible. Uh, that's very frustrating to do in WordPress. I am not a pro WordPress designer by any means. And oh my gosh, that was horrible. Uh, what I ended up doing is matching the color and a little bit of the a couple images. I We put some of the images on there that matched. Uh, otherwise, I kept it very basic. Um, and we found that if we did give people extra steps to sign up, like you need to sign up and then say, you know, what program you want to partner with or what you're going to look at, getting them to do that extra step was very difficult if they had already signed up. So we're we're working to make it so they need to say the part that we want the extra information before they are fully registered. Um, for whatever reason, it's hard to get it done afterwards. So uh, that was all going very smooth. And then we had a, a new development this year, um, a big initiative on campus. We have a new uh, a leadership, new president in for campus-wide professional development. Because um, I was focused on faculty, that's my area. Um, and the staff on our campus were not getting that same amount of professional development opportunities. Um, so we're, we decided we want to open this up to all employees. And so in the fall semester, we really kind of started to figure out how we can make this work and uh, started mapping it all together, how it would play out. Um, basically for the part for WordPress and this event manager, what 
I'm looking at here is there's some challenges. We now have more people involved. Before it was me and another person. We were the only two involved in creating workshops. That's it. Very simple. Um, now we'll have a lot more people because we have a whole committee of 10, 10 plus people on the committee uh, involved in this along with anyone else that does workshops. So we can have more people involved in the actual backside of the WordPress site. Um, then let's see. Then we also had um, it, now year round. I mentioned before it was just summer. Just summer that I had to focus on this tool. Now it's a year round tool. Um, so making sure it's updated more frequently is a thing I have to pay attention to more often now. Um, and we just have to maintain it longer then. Um, the good news is it's less likely to have a big break that I have to be stressed out about in the spring semester because we'll be watching it. Um, there's more variables for workshops. So like I mentioned, we had multi-stage. I'm assuming we're going to run into a lot more other things related that we never had as an, as an issue before um, because we're doing workshops of all different types of sessions now. Um, also, we might end up doing outside registrations. So we might have people actually paying for registrations. The good news is the Events Manager Pro does support that tool. It does have a payment system that you can use. Um, I just got to make sure if it works with how we handle payments on our campus um, to make sure everything kind of flows and is approved by how we do business here. I've never had to worry about that before because I would really hate for people to sign up for registration, then have to go to another site to actually pay. So want to keep it nice and simple to do that. Um, then professional development committee um, is the first group that we have to, we have to train people. Um, so I mentioned that committee earlier, we have to train them on how to use this tool. So they're understanding how to use WordPress, for this need. Then the employees that are creating workshops, I have to teach them on how they need to use this tool, how they can go in and see how many people are registered, um, how they can contact them through there to make sure that everything's running smoothly. Then as we get new employees, we got to build this into the training uh, of new employees, making sure everyone is on the same page from the day one. And also new employees might have very specific workshops they will have to attend. Uh, when they first become uh, an employee. So a lot of it all kind of builds uh, on each other, but basically a lot more people to train than I had before uh, because I had none. So now location, location, location. Where do we host the WordPress site? Um, where to ha have it? Do we make a new one? What, uh, you know, where it is right now, it's an academic related subdomain. So it actually has academic in the title of the subdomain. Um, that might not be very inclusive to everybody on our campus. You know, a staff member going on and seeing, you know, oh, well, that's for academics. That's not for me. I'm, I'm not teaching. Um, so we want to include everybody. But is it really worth the process of moving? Um, when people will go to this, they will be going through a link that's in our CMS or an email or an Outlook calendar or something like that. They're probably not looking at the URL to begin with. And so is it really worth the, the hassle of moving it? Um, that uh, is something we're looking at right now. Uh, what I want to do is leave it where it's at right now. And if at the very least we can say, well, we wanted to get it up and running. And then if we move it, we can move it. Then that's fine. We'll just tell people later we're moving it. It's not a big deal. Um, the link where the links would be at would be exactly the same place. So we're, that's where we're starting with, I think. Then syncing a calendar is going to be a big part of this for communication. Um, having the calendar that's in um, the Event Manager Pro sync to our CMS calendars. So people, when they're in our CMS, can see the upcoming workshops. And then also with Outlook. So if they have the calendar uh, connected to their Outlook, they subscribe to it, then they can see it in there. So when they see when upcoming workshops are coming that they go, oh, I'm interested in this one. 
because they, if it's year round, we want to make it as easy as possible for people to see things coming. That's That's got to be a big change. Uh, tracking is going to be different, though, um, because I mentioned earlier, faculty do credentialing. They still need that. But all employees, including faculty, are also going to need to track their professional development. Um, so there's two different types of tracking that needs to be done. How do we do this? I, I don't want to make as much problem on this as possible. You know, we have the data of who attended a session. If there's any way we can pull that data and use it in another way, that would be great. So we're still trying to figure out what to do with this one. Um, if it's another WordPress plugin or something that we can access the data from WordPress and take it somewhere else, um, that would be great. Uh, if they have less that they have to duplicate, all the better. Um, but they might have to do it in a separate place as well which is uh, frustrating, I think, a little bit. But at the same time, in the grand scheme of things, it's not that that bad, honestly. They'd still have the record here that if they forget something, they could come back to and see it in the list. So our rollout. The plan is to roll it out this spring to all employees. So partway through the semester, we'll start putting the, the, the workshops on, on the site and uh, start having people um, sign up to them. Uh, usually we have a, a meeting once a month of, uh, that we incorporate to all employees. This would be a good time to get everybody on board and understand how to use it. Um, then May 10th, we're having a big day of workshops for all employees. And so this is gonna be kind of the big one to make sure it all is working right because we'll have a lot of things that people are signing up for. A lot of different people are gonna be going to the site to be pulling information. Um, so that's gonna be the first big test of it, really. All right. And that's kind of where we're at right now. Obviously, um, we've made some big progress and we have a uh, ways to go though. I still think lots of things that can be done to make it even better. Um, my contact information is on here, uh, for Twitter, LinkedIn, and then my email address. So if you have questions or if you're like, Hey, how did you use this? You know, you can reach out to me. Um, I do see that there are a couple questions listed. Um, so here's the questions I can pull up here. Um, if you have questions though, in the bottom right corner, uh, ask a question. You can click that, put that in here so we can take a look and I can help you out that way. Um, first one up, list of the vendors. Now I put a, just, I said list of vendors generically on this in part because when I was looking at this, this was like five, six years ago initially. So I imagine a lot of them don't exist anymore. Uh, some of them probably still do, but they probably changed quite a bit. Um, so that's why I didn't really want to put them on there. Um, one thing that I did find is that a lot of e event signups have changed dramatically um, in the public space, um, but that we wanted something more inclusive. Um, the WordPress ones were probably the most well-developed uh, at the time, honestly. And uh, I actually have a couple others in our plugin list. They're not active right now, but they're in our plugin list um, that I have just as a reminder that if something happens with this other one, we do have other options available. So I keep it. I keep an eye on it just in case. Um, uh, the I did look uh, when I was really looking cost. I wanted as close to free as possible with this when I was just doing it with faculty. Um, when we roll it out now to campus wide, I actually would be okay including a, a more substantial budget if needed. Um, so I don't know how much of a budget that would be. That's obviously something the committee would have to decide as a group, but a, an actual budget would be involved with it. If we switched, we would be willing to pay more for a reliable, stable option. Now that we're having all employees because I felt we kind of got lucky and that the option I chose uh, did so well. Um, are your faculty accounts distinguishable in your Active Directory? Um, no. Um, no, everybody's the same. Um, where the links are that are that to access this site 
is actually um, only in a part of our CMS that the faculty and also employees now can access. That, that was how we uh, kept it away from them, um, just, just from that way alone. Um, we, it worked really well. I had actually been using a different part of the subdomain on WordPress for student resources for a while. So students were going to a different page that was not part of the forced login that they could go to for resources. This was like three years ago and none of them ever uh, entered into the other side of it at all um, when they were doing that. Um, so that, that's how we were just separating things out. Um, but we do have the ability to have groups and um, have groups have access to different things in our Active Directory, but I've just never had a need to, to use that, honestly. Uh, good comment though. Um, all right, so any other questions that I'm seeing in here or hopefully you guys got some good information from this, uh, from this uh, presentation here? Oh, great comment that you use this. Do you use the exact same uh, plugin, the Events Manager Pro? I'm assuming that's what you mean uh, for signups. Um, yeah, I, I'm i not sure. I'm not 100% sure, but North Carolina might have actually been one of them that I had looked at when I was trying to find what different schools were using for their <laughs> their resources. But um, they, that might have been one of them. I'm not sure. That was a couple years now. So. Um, yeah, the regular version. Yeah, the regular version and the pro version, unless you really have a use for the support part of the feature, which uh, because I don't have a WordPress developer on campus, I felt I needed. Um, and I did use that support tool uh, frequently the first year of it, making sure it was all set up the way I wanted. Um, but after that, you don't need the pro, but honestly, it's 70 bucks and you can add it at any time. So if you ever run into a big problem, that you do need the support tools for, you just pay the 70 bucks when it comes up. It's not that expensive and they don't care when you use it. All right, well, I think that is all the questions. And um, if you, anything comes up later or if you go, hey, I'm just kind of curious how you, you went in, because I didn't show a lot of the behind the scenes screens on it. If you wanted to see some of the other custom settings, like how did you, do that specific thing. Just shoot me a message. I'll be happy to share.